Oh my lord. Hello everybody, Silver Picker here, and man, do I have an incredible video to share with you today. Last week, I bought an incredible coin collection worth thousands of dollars, and if you missed it, you should check it out in the card over here. But included in that collection were also these two items. An incredible collection of rare banknotes from the United States, Canada, and the rest of the world, as well as this mysterious pencil case filled with other cool, unique, and interesting bills. Now, before we crack into them, you know what else is cool, unique, and interesting? The sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community with thousands of classes on all things creative, and it's great for curious and creative people like me, and I suspect you too. Now what makes me suspect that you'll like it too? Well, it's probably because one of the top comments, emails, DMs that I get, well, aside from people requesting that I send them free silver, is how can I start my own YouTube channel? And I love answering those emails because I love promoting new creative people to get their voices heard and get their ideas out into the world. And the best place to start, I can tell you, is on Skillshare. Skillshare has classes on everything you need to get started, whether you wanna make a video or a podcast, they've got all sorts of things that you can use, classes on video editing, the basics, all the way up to advanced cinematography, so no matter where you are in your creative process, there is something for you to learn. Even for me, with over 85,000 subscribers on YouTube right now, I'm still learning every single day. Right now I'm taking the Video Essentials class with Oren Sofer, and I'm only halfway through the class and it is amazing. I've learned so much about video lighting. Turns out you need three different types of lights to light a video properly. A key light, a fill light, and a backlight. Looks like I gotta order two more lights. Another great thing about Skillshare is that there are no ads, so you can really get your creative juices flowing without interruption. And it's less than 10 bucks a month. I've spent far more than that learning things the hard way when developing my YouTube channel. Now we don't know how 2021 will shake out, but it's likely we're all gonna spend a lot of time at home, so why not spend some of that time learning some of the skills that you've always wanted to learn and do it on Skillshare. It's so easy. And the classes are self-paced, so you can pause them, play them, pause them, take some notes, answer the door, don't forget to tip the pizza guy, and come right back and get into the creative zone and keep developing those skills. Sounds awesome, right? But if you're still unsure, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the Skillshare link in the description box below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your creativity with zero risk. That's also not a bad reason to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. So, check out Skillshare and let's check out these incredible banknotes. All right, here we go. We've got the album and of course I've got this weird pencil case thing which I will reveal the contents at the end of the video. But for now, let's check out what's inside here. Oh boy, yes, look at that. I have never seen an album like this before but it's really cool. I mean, you can flip through the different bills and see what you've got and it keeps them protected. It's really cool, but I personally am going to be removing these and putting the ones that I wanna keep in my US currency typeset. I'll do an update video on that soon so you guys can see how I'm progressing there. And everything else that I'm not gonna keep, I am actually going to have available for sale. So if any of you are interested in purchasing any of these awesome banknotes, the best way to contact me is on Instagram. So check me out at The Silver Picker on Instagram and send me a DM and we can work something out. Now, in terms of how we're going to tackle viewing all this, I think the easiest way is for me to remove everything from the album, and then we can see it without the glare, without all of the uh, other notes in the way. So let's get to it. Look at that, some hidden banknotes. Check that out, we'll get to those too. All right, so I've finished emptying all the different sleeves, but here is a really important tip for whenever you buy a coin collection or a banknote collection or anything, always, always, always thoroughly check whatever container you have. Because I didn't notice this at first, but there's actually pockets in here as well. There's nothing on this side, but check this out. Just as I was finishing up putting this away while filming, a massive trove of incredible banknotes popped out of there. And think about it, what if I had never seen that and either thrown away the album or sold the album to somebody else without noticing this? Would have been a huge, huge miss. 
All right, so I've got all the bills out of their holders and we are going to check them out one by one. And while we do that, we will also be keeping a tally of their values. So you can follow along in the corner over there. Let's get started with this first bill. All right, to start off, we have an amazing note. This is the $1 silver certificate Hawaii overprint note. And what's really cool about this, aside from the brown seal and serial number and the words Hawaii flanking the portrait on the front, or the giant overprint of the word Hawaii on the reverse is actually the story behind this. Now, the story behind this bill is that this was produced during World War II, specifically to be issued to troops and other people living in the Hawaiian Islands. Now, the worry from the United States was that the Hawaiian Islands would be overtaken by Axis forces, and then the money could be used to fuel their war effort against the United States. So what did they do? They created these new bills with a very identifiable brown seal with the word Hawaii printed all over it so that in the event that the Hawaiian Islands were overtaken by Axis powers, the United States could easily identify these bills and demonetize them, instantly making them worth zero so that the Axis powers couldn't use them against the United States. This is a real piece of World War II history that you can hold in your hands. And these are really desirable, but they're not that expensive. Now, this one is not in as good condition as the one that's in my US currency typeset already. So this one will be another one that is indeed for sale. Now, the next note is actually another Hawaii overprint note, but with a slightly cooler serial number. Check it out, 007, not too shabby. All right, and the next note is very similar to the previous two. This is the North Africa 1935 silver certificate. And just like the previous note that was used in the Hawaiian Pacific theater, the worry there was that the Japanese would overrun the island. Here, this is for use in North Africa. And again, they used a yellow seal instead of a blue seal so that it could be easily identified and demonetized if Axis powers took over the North African theater. Now, this is actually in much better shape than the bill that I currently have in my US typeset. So I am going to be upgrading and then selling the one that I currently have. You can take a look here. This is the one that I currently have. You can see, I'll take it out of the plastic, but it's all you know, folded up and creased. So upgrade. <laughs> now, some of you will know why I'm laughing. And that is, of course, because this is the 1934 $1 US silver certificate, which is also known as the funny back, and that's because the back of the bill looks like ridiculous carnival money, and that's why it's nicknamed the funny back. I believe this was the first small size $1 bill ever produced by the United States, and it's a little bit different than the more common $1 silver certificates that we're used to. See, it has a bigger seal, and it has the number one in blue, and of course, the different reverse. This is what the traditional one looks like. Now, this one is really awesome. I think the one I have is in slightly better condition, but I'll have to double check. And otherwise, I will upgrade, or this one will also be available. Really, really cool bill. Now, what's better than a $1 bill, but a $2 bill? And right here, we have a really cool one. This is what's called a United States note. That differs from the Federal Reserve notes that we use on a daily basis. If you want to learn more about that, I talk about it in my last banknote video right over here. You can check it out in the card. But what's really cool about this is, I don't have one yet. So this is going to fill the first hole in my US currency typeset from this big purchase. And I'm really stoked about that. I do have the later $2 US note, which you can see here an example of, which you can see that they have reversed where the seal is and there's some other design differences. So this is the 1928G and this is gonna be the first one that will go directly into my typeset. Now the next bill is a $10 US silver certificate and it is the 1953B version. So now in terms of my personal collection, we have the exact opposite scenario of what we had with that $2 bill right before. In this case, I already have the older version, which is this, in my US currency typeset. And now I need to have this newer version. You can see it's slightly different, again, with the blue 10 on the older one, the gray 10 on the newer one, the larger seal versus the smaller seal. So I'm pretty stoked to be able to get this and fill yet another hole in the collection. But don't despair, if you had your heart set on buying this but now are upset that I'm putting it in my personal collection, well, I have another one because the next bill is the exact same one but with a different serial number. Pretty cool serial number actually because it's got the double one and then the triple seven right after it. And it's in slightly worse condition, that's why I am not holding on to this one, but still an awesome bill. 
Now the next bill is one that I really, really think is cool because I am originally from New York and this is from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. This is national currency, not to be confused with Federal Reserve notes, US notes, or silver certificates, but these two have brown seals and this is really cool because I actually have in my typeset its bigger brother, the $20 Federal Reserve Bank of New York brown seal note. So this is a really cool one to get. And now I am going to be able to, again, grow my US currency typeset. This is the third unique bill to be going into the typeset from these first few bills alone, not including the upgrades. So I am already absolutely stoked with this collection. But guess what? Even if I didn't have that $20 New York note, well, there was one waiting right behind that $10 bill in this collection. So now I have a duplicate. This one is not in as good condition as the one that I have, so I'll be uh, sending this one off to someone else. Next up is the first ever United States gold certificate note that I have ever owned. And this one has a little rip down the middle, which is why I won't be putting this in my currency typeset, even though I don't have one. And you'll see why, of course, with the next bill. But this one is super cool because what this was for, just like silver certificates, back in the day in 1928 when this bill was in use, you could go to the bank and exchange this $20 gold certificate for a $20 gold eagle coin. Now, even though this bill is worth quite a bit as a collectible, the $20 double eagle would have been worth far more, talking like $2,000 in gold instead of what this bill is worth. But in any case, I'm still happy to have this piece of numismatic history. Well, now I'm sure you see why I am not putting that previous note in my US typeset. And that is, of course, because we have a gorgeous, unblemished, unripped $20 gold certificate. Not too shabby. Now, if you thought we were only going to be looking at US notes, you thought wrong, because we've got some amazing Canadian notes in this collection as well. And this is the 1954 $1 Bank of Canada note. Now, what I think is really interesting and also kind of perplexing is the reverse. Now, while I love the design and I think it's beautiful in terms of art and aesthetics, I find it really strange that Canada would choose to present itself as kind of like this bleak wasteland. I mean, for any of you Canadian followers down out there, can you please put in the comments below why they chose this image for the banknote? There is so much natural beauty in Canada. I've been to Canada over 20 times and I love it there. And I just can't understand why they would choose an open field with some telephone poles as its image for its $1 bill. Really, really unusual, but a beautiful bill and it is in crispy mint condition. Next up is the 1967 $1 Canadian note. You can see here it has the 1867 to 1967 and it is the Centennial of Canadian Confederation. What I'd be interested in knowing is why does it have a Star of David without the bottom point uh, as its symbol here for 1967? Very curious. Again, Canadian viewers, please enlighten us. The reverse of this to me is much more beautiful. We have here a gorgeous, gorgeous building. I'm not sure what building it is, but it looks a lot nicer than that sort of bleak wasteland. Next, I'm not gonna waste your time too much on this. This is a 1957A, very common US silver certificate, although it does have the creepy 666 serial number on it. Next up is this 1934C $20 US Federal Reserve note. Now, what's really great about these is that they look really old. They've got this beautiful lime green seal and they are almost 100 years old, but they don't sell for that much more than the face value, maybe double. So this is a great way to get started on your United States currency collection if you are a new or young collector. And another $1 Canadian. Do, 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 do. Yep, that's right. We've got ourselves another $1 funny back. Not too shabby. Oh boy, next up is another $1 Hawaii note, but this one is in pristine condition. It's not quite mint, but it is superb paper quality. It is fantastic and it is definitely going to replace the note that's in my current typeset. Wow, really, really nice. Next up, we've got this crispy, crispy, beautiful 1953A United States $2 red seal note. And this one is in much, much better shape than the one that's in my current typeset. So I will be upgrading this as well. I am so excited to have so many upgrades. Actually, the next note that was in the album is an identical one, of course, with a different serial number. And this one is also in super crisp mint condition. So that is really, really awesome. 
Oh, and what do you know? Another banknote that I don't have in my US currency typeset. This one is the $5 North Africa silver certificate. So it's the same as the $1 one, but five times cooler, am I right? See, it's got the gold seal. I've never had one of these before, and I am super stoked to have picked one up. Thank you, Michael, for allowing me to purchase these because I have been able to upgrade my collection like crazy. Next up is the famous $2 United States Red Seal laundry note because this has been in someone's pocket in the laundry. No, I'm just kidding, I have no idea, but this is one of the rattiest notes I've seen uh, of this type. So definitely not worth a whole lot. It's got a little chunk taken out of it, but still a very cool bill and certainly happy to have it. And another standard 1935 silver certificate. And we've got ourselves another 1934 $20 lime green seal $20 bill. To finish off the first row of our album is a 1928 $20 bill. Now what's cool about this is it looks like there is actually a number instead of a letter to symbolize the Federal Reserve Branch. This one is number seven for Chicago. I'm not so familiar with that. So if anybody's familiar with the numbering system, please let me know down in the comments below and explain sort of the significance of how this bill was designed. All right, who's ready for the second side? Next up is a piece of Canadian fractional currency. Now you've seen that I have a bunch of US fractional currency, but this is my first ever Canadian fractional currency note. It's a 25 cent note from the year 1900. Really, really cool note. Very nice font, very nice design, and also very similar to what you see in the United States. Now, I've got a bunch of really cool Canadian notes now. Should I start a Canadian banknote typeset? And next is a 1969D $1 Federal Reserve note. Nothing too special there, but still an old bill in excellent condition. Well, if I should, I've certainly got the notes for it. This is another 1954 Canadian note. And from the same series, we have this $5 Canadian note. Let's check out the reverse and see if it's any more interesting. See, that's what I'm talking about. Look how beautiful that is. That shows the beauty of Canada and the Canadian wilderness. Not that weird, empty, barren hellscape. And another hellscape note, I mean $1 Canadian note. And here we go, from the same series, a $2 note. Let's see, what are we gonna get on the reverse? Eh, sort of somewhere between the barren hellscape and the beautiful natural waterfall and forest image. See, this one wouldn't have made me notice it right away. I only noticed that this is kind of bleak based on that first $1 note. And we've got another one, and another one, and another five. Not too bad. And from the 1971 series, we have a Canadian $10 note. Now, this one also has kind of a perplexing reverse. It is what looks like kind of an oil refinery or something. Not very pretty, and not what I think when I think Canada, but I guess it does show sort of like their industriousness. All right, from the 1970s series again, this is a $5 note, and this one has a beautiful ship on it. See, I don't understand. These notes are like hit or miss. I mean, Canada, what's going on over here? We've got a $1 bill from 1973, a very beautiful reverse. I think this is much, much nicer than the $1 uh, hellscape. And another one. And another one. Thought we were done with US notes? Nope, we've got ourselves a bunch more and some really cool ones coming up towards the end of the video. This is a $5 silver certificate. You can see it has the blue seal. It's from 1953. I actually do not have this one in my typeset either. And right after there is a second copy. So I will be putting the better conditioned one in my typeset and the other one will be available for someone else. Now this one is a really weird one. This is like a laminated plastic encased $3 note from the Bahamas Monetary Authority. Now I think this is probably like a souvenir because the serial number is B00000 and that would lead me to believe that this was not actually intended for use, although I do believe this is a real bill design. Anybody that is an expert on Bahamian money, please let me know in the comments below what the deal with this thing is. Is this a you know, ordinary souvenir note or is this some kind of like really cool sample note? Please let me know. Another Centennial of Canada note. Ooh, and a 1969 $20 Canadian note. Let's see, we'll play the reverse game and Beautiful, look at that, look at that. Is that the Canadian Rockies? Absolutely gorgeous, really nice. And another one, and another five. 
Man, if we could only know what this guy has seen in its long life. This is a 1934B uh, $20 Federal Reserve note, and it is creased and stained, and it, this thing has been all over the place. Really interesting bill, though not worth too much. And another $2 bill, and another $1 bill, each from Canada. And the last note in that second sleeve is this $10 bill from 1928. Now, I was about to dismiss this as just an ordinary note in pretty ratty condition, but what I didn't notice is that over here, if you look at the text on this note, it says redeemable in gold on demand. I never noticed that. Is this actually like a gold certificate that I didn't realize? Or is this just what all Federal Reserve notes from that era said? Very, very cool. Now we've seen these incredible notes from the first two sleeves, but there are some really, really cool things that I found in the pockets hiding in that album. So let's take a look at those now. All right, and now we're going to finally take a look at the different notes that were hidden behind the pages of this album in that hidden pocket. And before I do, I really am sorry to disappoint you, but the video is running really long, and I did take a sneak peek into what's in this box. And the good news is that it's really, really unique and cool stuff, but the bad news is that it's gonna take way too long to give it justice by going through it just at the end of this video. So I'm sorry to have to string you along for another week, but next week's video will focus on this piece of the collection and we'll look at that. So please, again, my apologies. I don't want to disappoint you, but there really isn't enough time to go through this as well. So let's take a look at these awesome banknotes and uh, you'll stay tuned for next week for that one. All right, so in that first little pocket, it's mostly just more of these Canadian banknotes. We've got one, two, three, four from the 1954 series, and then we've got a 1973, another 1973, another 1973, and yet another 1973. Nothing special there. But yeah, the stuff hidden in the other pockets, yeah, those are something special. Let's start with the Canadian. So inside this package are actually two uncut sheets of $2 bills, a three-piece and a Two piece. I'm talking like it's chicken nuggets over here, but in any case, we've got two pristine uncut sheets. So this is what they look like before the banknotes are cut apart to be used in commerce. Now that's a gorgeous reverse. Look at that. That is spectacular. See, Canada really hits the mark on some of these. It's just those other bills that I just don't know what the designer was thinking. But how cool is that? Now, I don't really know too much about these, so if any Canadian banknote collectors can tell me sort of whether these uh, were sold in sets of five like this or if this was cobbled together after the fact, definitely would be curious. Now this little certificate of authenticity came in that same envelope, but it's not from the actual set because this is talking about a proof coin and banknote set, which of course this is not. All right, Canada, you've definitely redeemed yourself with this one. Oh my lord, look at this banknote. This is a 2012 polymer note. It's in mint pristine condition, and that means it is made out of a plastic instead of out of paper. And what's really cool, aside from all the different security features and this hologram of the queen and what looks like, uh, looks like Big Ben, but this is a Canadian note, not a British note, so I'm not sure what that is. But we have here also Braille, so people who are blind can use these notes. This is a state-of-the-art note. Really, really cool. So glad to have this. All right, and the last three notes are spectacular large size banknotes. And guess what? I don't have any of them. This one is a Federal Reserve note. It's a $20 note, and you can see it says 4D. I'm not sure what that is from. I mean, I, obviously it's from the uh, Ohio Federal Reserve branch, but I don't know what 4D means. And this is the 1914 version. And you can see that it has Grover Cleveland on the front. Unfortunately, it does have a big chunk taken out of it. So that is definitely going to lower its value. But still, look at that. The reverse is so cool. It's showing off like the ultimate of the technology at the time. You've got the steam engine and you've got these steamships. You can see the Statue of Liberty in the background. This is really cool. You also see one of these little cars and a little tugboat. I mean, I could really examine this note for hours and probably find different things that are unique about it in every single minute. Really, really cool and certainly valuable. Now the second to last note is a $1 from 1914. It's national currency. It has George Washington and a blue seal. This one's in spectacular condition and this one's from the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. Now I have one from the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia, or excuse me, of Pennsylvania, and it is the same design on the reverse, same design on the obverse, but obviously it says 
Pennsylvania. Now, I have a closer personal connection to Pennsylvania than I do to Chicago, so I'm wondering, even though this is in slightly better condition, which would you put in your typeset? Would you put the one that has a closer connection to you personally, or the one that is simply the best condition bill? And if you guys vote in the comments below, I think I'll probably go with whatever you decide. So Chicago, which is a nicer bill, but less of a connection, or Pennsylvania, which is a slightly less good conditioned bill, but I have a family and friends that live there. Okay, last but certainly not least is the $5.1907 United States note, also known as the woodcutter note. This is one of the most iconic banknotes in early American history. This one shows this family of pioneers, the woodcutter, with the wife, the baby, and the dog, the perfect American family, and it is just spectacular design. Look how regal this thing looks. Look how amazing it is. And you've got Jackson over here in the portrait. You've got the red seals, the red V for five. I mean, it's definitely got a lot going on, and certainly if it was a new design, I would find it probably too busy, but I just love the little vignette at the center of this beautiful woodcutter. We'll take a look at the reverse. The reverse is just uh, one ridiculous mess of designs, and I mean, this is super cool. I wouldn't say that I would love the design of this on the reverse, but it's almost got like a playing card feel. It sort of looks like a combination between hearts and spades on the corners, but really, really cool. It has a bunch of really nice text, lots of designs for anti-counterfeiting, which is pretty high technology for the time. I mean, this is 1907 we're talking about. So that is the last banknote that was in that album, and what a way to end. Check this out. $237 face value in US currency from all different eras of United States history, from all different types of uses, gold, silver, wartime, peacetime, state currency, Federal Reserve notes, national currency, you name it, we got it here. And there is so much stuff going into my personal collection, a lot of stuff available for sale. And you can't forget about the oodles and oodles of Canadian currency and that bizarre Bahamian $3 bill. How do you like that? Holy moly, those were amazing. Those banknotes were incredible. Thank you so much, Michael, for giving me the opportunity to purchase them. There are some that are definitely gonna go straight into my US currency typeset. I'll do an update video on that one of these days and you guys can see how I've progressed. And the rest will either be squirreled away by me for a future numismatic project or as an investment, and I'll even be selling some of them. So if you're interested, the best way to contact me is through my Instagram. DM me at the silver picker and we can strike a deal. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that big old red subscribe button and come back for more because I've got a lot more awesome coin collecting, precious metals investing, and even personal finance videos for you guys coming down the pike. So stay tuned, and until then, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you for your continued generosity. And just to let you know, all of my patrons will get first dibs on purchasing any of the banknotes in this video or any of the silver coins in the previous one.